called Black Metal.
come to Athens back in the 90s uh, were either these sort of like commercial minded like rock star wannabe bands who wanted to be the next Black Crows or whatever or there were these weird kind of underground bands that we related to better as weird Athens bands. There was not a whole lot of money involved. There was a lot of creativity and some pretty weird, cool stuff. And those were the bands that we thought were interesting and fascinating. And that was the smoke side of things. And some of it was quieter and, you know, leaned in one music di musical direction or the other. And some was really heavy. And Chris was involved with a lot of that. And Justin was involved with a lot of that. So I was dazzled more by the creativity of that underground. And a lot of it happened to be in that sort of East Atlanta, Cabbage Town scene, but it was more of an economic thing because it wasn't a really ritzy part of town. That's where all the starving musicians and weirdos kind of lived at the time. Just it so happened to be like that, kind of like parts of Athens. But I was on the outside experiencing it whenever they came to Athens. But they were in the middle of it. And you were at Vanderbilt, so... I was uh, in Birmingham at the... <laughs> at the Nick, hanging around. At, at, at <laughs> eating at the club, dining at the club. And yeah, yeah. Hitting golf balls at Vestavia Country Club and climbing the Vulcan. But you were talking to Creative Loafing about this a few weeks ago. The cabbage. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of like one of those, those scenes where that's just kind of people, because you know people, um, where you just kind of gather around and it's just like yeah cheap part of town cheap place to live yeah it was a fertile time for everybody and it was just youth you know what i mean and so you know some people moved on some people kept playing in bands kept playing in bands our band you know writing songs was really important to me that's where i just kind of you know i'm the kind of person that like listened to a million records when i was a kid and then when i was a young adult listening to records and getting into the new kind of music you know because like when you hear like hardcore for the first time you're like i don't understand that hey now i understand that or or noise music that was another big part of like you know there was like kind of a noise contingency there was like a rock and roll contingency there was you know so it's like everybody was just kind of learning you know what i mean just learning how to be a person in the world artistically um and then learning, you know, different lifestyles too, you know what I mean? You come from, I mean, I'm a suburban kid, you know what I mean? A lot of that stuff flipped me out, you know? Like Benjamin taught me a lot about how to be a free person and how to be accepting and, you know, um, how to be a performer, lots of those. Different. So yeah, fascinating, very interesting time in my life. Not a whole lot of MTV rock star stuff going on either. It was more organic and down to earth and a lot of support from different areas that was the impression I got um, nobody was really thinking about being sort of like a random community of people who are just sort of doing things because they felt compelled to be artistic sure and, yeah they're bored let's see what we can do let's make some noise that people yeah dig that was the impression we got in Athens people so. who dig music I mean you know I mean you can think of like you know early 90s like things were changing people were you know just people digging new kinds of music trying to emulate that if, you, you, you know what I mean cheap too the indie rock kind of like well we've got a tape deck let's make a record for 20 bucks so you could possibly you could actually make that happen people forget what uh, indie really meant independent and yeah cheap. independent and cheap <laughs> and, low and no record major label funding yeah. So yeah so there were a lot of bands that kind of intermingled you know like and it goes like way back Opal Fox Quartet you know before Smoke um, and Jody Grind and you know like Kelly from the Jody Grind was in the Rocket Team we just another one of those things we're like let's just make a band you know what I mean and we'll just make it a band that we would want to hear
about the love of records and how you can hide in music. We had a month off musically. We still had our own, the same gear and the same mannerisms and the same, you know, it was like this comically dysfunctional kind of band practice kind of scene like we always had. Like, what? How does this start? What's going on? Do we have any more beer? Like, it was all just, it was just like it always was, you know, years and years later. So that felt good. And, and then we actually sounded better because we had this, you know, gap where we had time to listen back to our old tunes and 
play them the way we wished we'd played them back when we recorded them because we're always rushed to record stuff and it's like damn I wish I'd played this a little more easy or we played this a little slower or a little more upbeat so the old stuff sounded better and then all of a sudden we had new stuff too and that was all because of the songs that Chris was working on not necessarily for the Rocket Teens but just songs and one thing led to another and here we are I mean as we got together and re like really enjoyed what we were doing so we played you know that merge anniversary show and then we booked a bunch some show like some shows before it like maybe we should you know get the act together before we get on a big stage then we're like well hey well why don't we go you know do like a northeastern tour and did you know a few shows and they went really well and then we're like oh this is great now what do we do now that it's over and it, it was like you know if we're going to continue doing this we need to make a record it's probably the best sounding and best played and most fully realized record we've done because every record's got its personality but this one's kind of big and confident and I don't know it still sounds like the Rocketeens but uh, I mean you were there for the whole thing Will you were kind of the coach all the way through oh yeah you were so. <laughs> no it was nice to be able to uh, to in a, it wasn't like it was planned out it was still a lot of spontaneous things happened and the, the album evolved but it was better time frame it was a healthy way to do better it. equipment yeah, yeah. better uh, thought process yeah, yeah. better so, recording technology that yeah. exists yeah uh things are different from the old days when it was like all right let's go uh, the, 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 we've got eight hours let's do as much as we can okay that's good enough let's go with it so we were able to we actually redid half the stuff we, i came back and redid drum parts that i'd done months before just to fix a little beat and it, it worked out really, really well. I look forward to doing another one if we've got it in us. Oh,
she's coming back up, yeah, just like it's that back. So sad to say, so don't be mad, just do this. Ciao, ciao. ciao, ciao. ciao.